Welcome to EOPCR 2025. I am Antonio Colombo from Milano, Italy, and it's a pleasure to have with me Dr. Aloke Finn from Maryland, USA. Aloke. Thank you. So, uh, Antonio, we're here to discuss the issue of particulate embolization with drug-coated balloons. Now, I want to differentiate that from distal embolization we talk about when we talk about doing an angioplasty on an unstable lesion and plaque constituents go downstream and might clog or interfere with the microvasculature. Drug-coated balloon particulate embolization is a different phenomenon entirely. And what I mean by that is drug-coated balloons are coated with the material, different types of materials. Those types of materials may flake off the balloon, come, come into the bloodstream, and embolize downstream into distal organs that are being treated. It's very important to understand that drug-coated balloon drug efficiency, that's the transfer efficiency of drug to the wall, is relatively poor. Most of the loaded dose of drug that goes uh, into the patient actually gets lost into the downstream vasculature rather than going to the arterial wall itself. So this is a very important phenomenon. We have shown in preclinical models, whether you look at the peripheral vasculature or the coronary vasculature, if you use in particular uh, crystalline paclitaxel balloons and you look downstream at the, either the skeletal muscle or the uh, heart, you can see evidence of injury, cellular injury injury from these particulate emboli. You can detect injury using histopathology, looking at mycite necrosis, or downstream looking at skeletal muscle necrosis, and you can also look at the embolic debris that goes downstream by looking at small arterioles, either in the skeletal muscle or the heart. So there's no question in our mind in these relatively simplistic animal models that particulate embolization occurs after drug-coated balloon treatment. I'd like to in start by asking you do you think this is a clinically relevant issue for patients being treated with drug-coated balloons today? But, thank you uh, for this question. In my experience, uh, this is not a universal phenomenon because uh, uh, especially in the coronary with a very brisk flow, uh, these uh, particulate, uh, which are a reality, get cleared from the peripheral vasculature quite uh, well. Uh, but in some patient subsets, uh, uh, patient with acute myocardial infarction, patient uh, with a stunned peripheral uh, uh, circulation, patient with low ejection fraction, this issue may become clinically relevant. So I would not uh, say that this is a common issue, but uh, in uh, some patient subset, when you utilize uh, multiple uh, drug-coated balloon, very long drug-coated balloons, uh, this may become uh, clinically relevant and the operator will see a difference in TIMI flow before to after drug-coated balloon application. Got it. In reference to your comment, I do think that uh, there are places where drug-coated balloons have not succeeded. And, uh, you know, obviously we know the longer the balloon, the larger the balloon, the more drug load, the more particulate emboli. Below the knee area for, has been tried with drug-coated balloons, and so far we have not seen success. Some people believe part of the problem with using in particular paclitaxel crystalline coated balloons below the knee is an issue of particulate emboli and distalizing to what you're saying is slow flow in that region. So your comments are well taken. Yes, I, I think uh, we have to make clear that this uh, does not apply to all drug coated balloons. Uh, we need to understand what is uh, an amorphous uh, drug-coated balloon uh, carrier versus a crystalline carrier, which does not necessarily apply to Parkitaxel or Sirolimus uh, as a group, uh, but we have to be more specific uh, in the type of formulation that the drug uh, is uh, uh, attached to the balloon. I, I generally agree with that. In, in our experiments, we can't prove causality, but we can only show that in general, and I'm speaking in general, um, drug-coated balloons with smaller particulates, smaller carriers, generally don't 
have as much embolization and don't have as much impact of the embolization <coughs> in terms of downstream organ damage. So I do think your comment about amorphous paclitaxel controlling the particulate size is extremely important and differentiating different types, for instance, of paclitaxel coated balloons. Those with crystalline paclitaxel tend to have less regulation of the crystals sizes yeah. and therefore the crystals can be up to 600 microns. Those can get trapped in downstream arterioles, whereas amorphous paclitaxel balloons, which are less common, probably don't have that same effect, but that remains to be proven. Yes, absolutely. And uh, how should we be aware uh, in our clinical practice about this phenomena? I think uh, in some patient subset uh, and in some type of uh, lesions, if we are treating a short lesion with a 20 millimeter balloon, maybe that has no relevance. Yeah. But if we are treating a long lesion with two 40 millimeter balloon, especially if the patient has a depressed ejection fraction, we have to take this into account and make some differentiations. Yeah, I agree with that. So I wanna, I wanna finish this conversation by asking you a question about how do we translate the preclinical findings that we have shown in multiple studies into the clinic, as we go forward and do clinical trials, which there are plenty of with drug-coated balloons, how do we begin to understand the impact of these particulate emboli in terms of drug-coated balloons? But so far, uh, what I, we have been talking uh, is based on personal observations. I believe it is time uh, to produce a study, a pre uh, a planned study where we measure the distal microvascular resistance before and after drug-coated balloon uh, treatment with different type of drug-coated balloon and see how much uh, in terms uh, of uh, uh, variation in microvascular resistance uh, this phenomena has an impact. And we are doing a small study uh, evaluating uh, two different drug-coated balloons and measuring uh, microvascular resistance only for lesion treated with long balloons, not for short balloons. Yeah, I, th I think that's a good comment. And, and I kind of think this is akin to the situation with first-generation drug-eluting stents versus now second, third, fourth generation. Only by identifying problems with technology can we improve the technology and make it better. So studies like yours, I think, are very important in order for us to improve this particular device to make it as safe as possible for the patients. Absolutely. Uh, as we become more accurate, we know where the problem is, even if the problem is small, but uh, I think uh, only paying attention to details, uh, you reach uh, the perfect goal. Absolutely. So how do we uh, summarize our, our talk? I think uh, embolization exists, but is not uh, embolization of the atherosclerotic uh, plaque of the thrombus. It is uh, a iatrogenic embolization induced by the device. It is not a big problem, but uh, in some patients may be relevant. Uh, is not universal uh, to every drug coated balloon, is not universal to every drug, but uh, we need to learn uh, where to avoid and how to prevent. Thank you. Hello. Thank you.